Okay, we have something interesting here today. We wanna to find the digamma function at one, just using what we have over here to the right. We've got the definition for the digamma function up top here in terms of the derivative of the natural log of the gamma function. And we have our definition for the gamma function in terms of an integral. Now, a couple notes on this. There are some quicker ways to do this using other formulas. So we'll go over that at the end of the video. And also, this is not gonna qualify as a proof because this is gonna rely on a previous video we did, we'll use this result that the Laplace transform of ln t is going to be this value. But for that, I think we actually relied on the fact that we already know the digamma function of one. So it's gonna be circular reasoning if you wanted to use it as a proof. So to get started with it, I'm just gonna start with our definition for the gamma function. We'll start with this integral over here and we'll write that down. And then for this, what I want to do is let's use Feynman's trick on it. We already have something parameterized here. We've got a function we're integrating with respect to t, but we have it parameterized with this z right here. I should probably clean that up so it looks better though. And then so what I want to do on it, let's go ahead and differentiate this with respect to z. And how we'll do that with Feynman's trick is we will differentiate inside the integral sign as a partial. So we'll have this. I don't know if I said integrate, we want to differentiate with respect to z here. Now this e minus t, this part here is just going to be a constant, so let's throw this over this way so we don't confuse it, but then we want to differentiate this part with respect to z. And so then we'll go ahead and differentiate this. Again, t is just a constant, so you can think about this like a case when we have to differentiate 5 to the x or something like that. We're just going to use the formula. What we get back is t to the z minus 1 natural log the constant, natural log t, e minus t, dt. And so we'll use this as our value for gamma prime of z. And then now at this point, let's go back, let's bring in our definition for digamma gamma z, particularly the one that's gonna be useful for us is this stuff over here on the right. So what I can do for this, let's kind of put this in a different form. So we're gonna have digamma gamma z, we'll bring this part out front, so we'll write this as one over gamma of z. And then for this part in the numerator, we've got this definition here. We have this in terms of an integral, so we can just kind of copy, we can just copy all this stuff in. And now that we have this way to define the digamma function, let's plug in one for our z value and see what happens to it. So then we're gonna have digamma of one. Gamma function of one, we can relate the gamma function to factorials, like if we have if we have gamma of z, this is gonna be the same thing as z minus one factorial. I guess usually it'd be like z plus one, but you just reduce it by one and you get that as a factorial. So here, if we have gamma of one, this is gonna be like zero factorial and that's just one. So here we just have one over one. So that whole part goes away. So let's just plug in now to the integral. But here, if we plug one into the exponent for z, one minus one is zero t to the zero is just one. So that part is gonna go away when we plug in one here. So then we'll just have natural log of t, e minus t dt. And then now at this point, you may recognize the similarity here. This is in pretty much the form for Laplace transform. All I need to do is if I create an s here, and so that I'm not changing it, let's just assume s is one. So then we've got the same problem. This here is gonna be exactly in the form of a Laplace transform, particularly, particularly the Laplace transform of t, and that's what we found here in the previous video. So let's go ahead and just plug this value in down here. Let's see what we have. So we end up, so this here is gonna be minus Euler Mascheroni constant, which we have over here. The value of that is something around 0 0.577 plus natural log s over s. If you want to see where this value came from, I'll provide a link to the other video and also a link to this digamma function playlist. But anyway, getting back to finishing this off, we're really close now because here we have our digamma of one written this way, but we already know what S is. We just said it was one. So all we need to do is plug one in here and here. We get a little space. We know what the constant is now. So then to finish this off, what we need to do, we have minus Euler Mascheroni constant plus natural log of just one over one. Well, this doesn't matter. Natural log of one is just zero. So what we're left with for our solution of this is just minus Euler Mascheroni constant, and that's it. Okay, so now that we have kind of a longer way to get to this, let's look at a couple quicker ways, just using some other formulas to get the same value. 
Okay, now there's probably quite a few different ways to do this. I just have a couple of nice formulas over here to the right that we can use, for example. So I think we'll start with this first one, the series expansion. And all we need to do in this function are z values right here. So we just need to plug a one in right there. And so this is gonna be real quick and easy. What's gonna happen when we do this? We have for di gamma one, we have minus Euler Mascheroni constant. And then we have this sum of one over n plus one minus, you plug a one in here, we get a one over n plus one. What's gonna happen is this right here, this is just gonna be a zero. So this part of it just goes away completely and we get right to our solution minus Euler Mascheroni constant. But another way I thought was kind of fun is just using this integral definition over here. So this one's gonna go really quick as well, but the thing that was kind of fun for me on this one is I think we did, yeah, we did this exact, or something really similar to that integral. And then part of that discussion was the di gamma function and stuff. So we kind of did this or partially did this in the other video. But anyway, let's just go ahead here. Now our z value needs to be zero in order for this here to be one. So we go ahead and plug in zero now in order to get a value for di gamma one, we get minus Euler Mascheroni constant the integral becomes integral from zero to one. We have one minus t to the zero right here is just a one. And what happens, the whole integral just gets zeroed out and we're left again with just all our mascaroni constant. Anyway, there you have it. Not a proof, but some interesting derivations just using a couple formulas to quickly get to the formula, or I guess not so quickly in the case of the first way when we did Feynman's trick. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.